Key themes and takeaways from Inman Connect virtual conference first ever today on the show. And why we can learn some hair lessons during COVID-19. <laughs> right. Today on a very modified Wandering Zen. <laughs> Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now, and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling, and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meets us is episode 123. All of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jan O'Brien, we continue to move on, move forward, and are optimistic about the future. We adapt, and but look, look at Matt is where I would like to be right now. He's got the beautiful Florida palm trees. Look at how gorgeous that background is if you're, not, if you're listening on on uh, the podcast make sure you go over to the show notes where you can watch the video or over on our youtube channel and you can see matt with his with his ever lengthening hair i must say <laughs> which i actually like <laughs> i'm going shorter today i'm getting a haircut i you swear I'm, I'm at my mother, mother's house because she's having some medical problems and i am looking through old pictures and i am really very very close to being back to high school hair Wow, are you feeling like you're in that high school? Uh, I body, do not feel like body? I do not feel like that in body, <laughs> which makes it a very weird thing. It's like, what is that show on? I think it's on Lifetime Younger or something. I don't know. I I, I just it's it, yeah, it's a weird thing to look at your hair being so long. And, but here's the deal. This is why I'm not getting my hair cut. I mean, I can wow. get my hair cut. I mean, for crying out loud. Wait, your hair That's, your hair person's not there. I want the person that cuts my hair all the time. Her name is Caprice, and you can look back on our show. She went on a fantastic uh, 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 Grand Canyon rafting trip. She's inspirational. She's wonderful. And I want her to be the one that actually cuts all this off. <laughs> so I am uh, going Let to do girl. I'm going <laughs> to forward the course and yeah, wait for that to happen. So. All right. Well, it's definitely, I heard the turn to, I heard the, the phrase today, and I think we can all understand it, Corona fatigue. Uh, and I yeah. think that's a little bit about uh, everything from the the, the built up anxiety and just the uh, of the unknown and everyone trying to adapt. It starts to take a toll on your body, your mind. And, you know, we've been talking a lot about that in our shows and sure. it's one thing to talk about it, but it's another thing to continue to work on your mindset and your and your, uh, you know, what, how you doing, you know, your mental, your, your physical, but your mental health also, right? Right. <laughs> no, it's been on top of issues dealing with family members or any kind of things that are going on. You know, life goes on. People get sick. People have babies. People it's do so things. True. It's so true, Janet. It's um, like down here in Florida uh, right now. There's a huge spike in uh, cases and deaths and hospitalizations mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff it's like you can't i i, I there is the fatigue absolutely everyone's targeted for crying out loud but i really believe that you have to be vigilant and you got <clears throat> the only way to get through it is to be more vigilant and more <clears throat> um <sighs> more careful yeah, you know what? I, I agree with you. And the sad part is we're so divided as a nation. I saw these charts that, that, that showed um, how Spain, Italy, and France have trended because of how tight they were as sure. a country. And, you know, they have the curve the way that we were hoping to. And ours has peaked but kind of stayed flat up high as opposed to dipping down. And right. now, you know, probably now in the coming months, for all the various reasons from people being out in the streets protesting, which I'm all for that. I'm all for <clears throat> what's happening in the in the country, in the world, and the waking up and the changing. And we talk those themes of rebooting and setting things. I mean, <clears throat> let's face it, that's what that's what's happening in our world. Right. Um, but the point is, <clears throat> those people are the next. Um, there's already reports of of, of people from the early protests um, at the beginning of the month, uh, having, being ill, right? 
correct, right? So, uh, or testing positive, I guess is the way to say it. So anyway, I uh, I don't know. I just think it's going to be a while. And that is, that's probably one of the things that is most concerning because instead of getting back to, so I think what happens is the, because of a country of us staying, staying like on peaks and valleys, but never really getting it under control until there's a vaccine, it just means we're going to continue to have this half start of the economy different states trying to keep it it's totally only, right it's so like right now we have my sister my niece was in town and nobody stopped to think that we're going to go to a, a, a mexican restaurant she always likes to go to so i'm about to meet them and i go hey did you get reservations because you know you pretty much have to have reservations now because it's 50 percent capacity and then they aren't using you know they got this most of the restaurants are doing a good job with that so they call and they're like, no, it's booked. I'm like, yeah, that is that is our life right now. You just don't get to pop into a restaurant. You pretty much have to make reservations if it's right. a popular restaurant. And these are the things that are changing. They're like, oh, really? I'm like, yeah, that's that's the deal now. So anyway, I just think we're we're in we're in for a long haul, which is just more stress and strain. But the good news. So let's pivot to some good news because we're kind of yeah. The doom and gloom episode of uh, it's not doom and gloom, it's just reality, it is reality, but it feels right? Kind of negative, right? However, I, I do want to we'll, we'll dive in here and talk about the Inman Connect was had their first virtual conference, it was super successful, and it was June 2nd before it was supposed to be here in Vegas live. I was planning to go to it, um, so I want to talk a little bit about that because the I felt it was better because of the ability to pop in and get more accomplished and. Have, you know, see if I want to listen to that, pop out and go into another one, plus the replay. Right. That's awesome. Let's jump into that next on our next segment. You got it. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. All right, so what did I learn? Inman Connect, as I said, did the first virtual conference, and I think it was so successful that they've already launched a couple others they're gonna do for the rest of the year. Um, I don't know what their numbers were overall, but obviously it was the least expensive way to go to one of these conferences. The only negative thing about the conference in my mind was the only thing that I missed, because we've been to several of these, is the actual networking. It's the HooliCon! The HooliCon, right? And if you don't know what the Hoolicon reference is, you know, you just need to Google that. You need to go figure that out. That yeah. is an obscure reference. I dare, reference you. I to dare you not to know that. that. We both like. Go ahead. I just dare you not to know I dare that. you. If anybody <laughs> can figure that one out, you'll win a prize. We'll send you a WBNL shirt or something because that is an obscure reference and it is a fun reference. So, yeah, that's a big part of Inman, physically meeting people, having meetings, making the networking. That They try to do some of that. It's kind of hard to do that virtually, even in the the little coffee things and the virtual happy hours. It was more about the people that were on the panel chatting. So that's the downside to it. However, the upside, I think, was even more impressive. There was, you know, there's always a lot of um, a little bit of promote self-promotion in some of these things because they're bringing speakers in and they're not paying them. They're providing content. Um, you know, I particularly as a broker, recruiter, you know, for, for the that world and growing businesses and teams and so forth. I enjoyed the T360 stuff. I'm not going to talk about any of that today because I want to talk about agent things, but T360 is a great company that Stefan Swanepoel and his partners own. They uh, do a lot of work with brokers and, and so on, but they had some great content. There were great people. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about some insights from Gary Keller that I found really useful. So here's where the themes were. And, and the, I guess what I liked most about it was there's multiple things going on. So you could pop into the Zoom, they were using a different platform also, and you could stay for a while and go, Do I am I getting out of this? It's like, nope, I'm gonna leave here, I'm gonna go bounce into that one. I like that a lot, as opposed to physically moving around trying to make a session or something. So we have, uh, we, we, if for those of you watching the video or if you're listening, go watch the video. Plus you can always get the show notes always over at WBL Podcast. This is episode 123, but in our, amazing video presentation today. I've got the notes, so I'm going to go through them with you here. And I wrote down some key themes. A lot of the, obviously, June 2nd through 4th, this was at the, just at the very beginning, sort of the height of uh, the uh, George Floyd uh, beginning of the protests and so forth that are happening in uh, Minneapolis. And, and so there was a lot of people reflecting and talking about that and talking about diversity and 
and and what you have to do to become an anti-racist. It was really a big theme. A lot of big companies were stepping in and talking about that. Uh, so that was a theme that was going through there. But the, but the a lot of people stopped and talked about that, and then they pivoted to the things I want to talk about today regarding real estate, which is you know what does everybody learn through COVID and um, what are they doing right? So big theme was. COVID-19 has been an accelerator for technology and trends. I'll get into that in just a moment, a little bit more, but that is a theme I keep hearing and I've been feeling. It's like things were already moving in a direction with consumer behavior, the way tech, the whole experience for the consumer and the advent of continually using technology. It's not like all of a sudden Zoom was new because we had COVID-19, right, Matt? We, it's, it's been around. Doing yeah. video tours and virtual tours, Matterport, that's been around for years. People just didn't do it. Okay, so it was an accelerator, number one, big theme. And various ways people saying it, it's about high tech, soft touch, humanizing the digital experience. So engaging meaningful, meaningfully with people, meaning you use tech, but it's about the relationship always first and foremost. And it's about what the consumer wants, not what we think they want, not what we're about, not why you should choose me. It's all about, um, what do you want and how do I adapt my behavior to give you what you want? That's a key. So innovations in tech that benefit the consumer was a, was another theme running through everything. This is not new, this next one, but I love that it continues to be, you know, for the years I've been blogging since 2006, this is the, the, the theme for creating, how you create an online presence is you've got to be able to be relationships are king, content is queen. I forgot who said this, but I loved it. And authentic authenticity is everything. So don't try to be someone you're not. And I get this theme all the time listening to people I firmly believe in it. So you might find somebody you like on Instagram or someone who's killing it on YouTube uh, with their real estate channel and so forth. Um, you you need to figure out what your voice is. Don't try to pretend to be that person because you're, you're going to suck at it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And can I just attest Please. to the fact that I just saw Jenna Bryan rocking out to 21 Pilots last week. Mm. And it was heartwarming. So can I just say, <laughs> shout because, out to my boys. Yes, because 21 Pilots, I, I drug Matt to a concert. <laughs> you didn't drag me. He, he, just went. he liked it, but it's not his cup of tea music, that's for sure. But yeah. I don't I do think you enjoyed it, right? Oh my god, it was awesome. But the point is you were you love those guys and you were rocking out before our podcast last week and you filmed it. And well, it let was, me just talk really about fun. what I was doing because and I you know what? It's it okay, that stuff's a little scary for me to put online. I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. I, I cannot I mean, have like what? no, I wait, wait. What no, I was doing. wait, wait, wait. I Set up applaud that. you for that, Jenna Bryan, because Thank that you. was not your, it's Comfort not, that, no, wait, wait a minute. Here's the deal. Yeah, exactly. It's not that you, it's not your normal, what you would do. It's your comfort zone of showing that, sharing that with other people. And I, I applaud you for that. Thank you. Cause I, was, I would, I was doing that. I wasn't doing it for the camera. That was me because those guys fire me up. So go listen to <laughs> level of concern. <laughs> by 21 pilots and go watch their YouTube channel. So you know what's something cool those guys are doing? Talking about keeping a relationship going with their fan base, which is called the click, the skeleton click. And uh, I have been a fan since the beginning. These two guys are brilliant, amazing. I love the lyrics. They both struggle with a lot of things young people struggle with, which is just confounded right now with like depression and right. and um, other things and they deal with it in their music and so there's just some really cool stuff anyway they've got a whole cool thing going on right now and of course the fans are crazy i don't have time to go figure it out where they 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 did a live stream and they left clues in the tv oh, in the really? yes yeah, cool. 20 different clues where you can go and if you go figure it out you go back to this website they put you put these location clues in at level of concern, LOC uh, codes, and they're hidden in the oh. frames. They're all over the place. It's very interesting um, to just watch what people have done to figure it out. And then they go give you little, you download some files, and it's like some pictures off of their phones and personal stuff. It's very cool. So anyway, that's a perfect example. Yeah, but we back to do for relationships or everything. Content is queen and being authentic, and that's who they are. Authenticity, authenticity is everything. Exactly. And love it. Thank you. Post for what that you up. love. 
All right. So another thing that came up several times is about the migration to the burbs. Okay. That more people are, are feeling that they want to move. I think this trend ha has been happening for a while anyway. So, you know, that for a little while it was like the urban work, home work play thing, you know, like live in the town where you also work. And there's still some of that, but there is a bigger, there's a lot of uh, data out there right now showing people are leaving the mm -hmm. cities to go back to the suburbs. And there's a couple reasons for that. And I'll get into that in a moment about, and especially with coronavirus, people having enough space, okay, oh. and what they're going to look for in homes. So that simple. was interesting. So providing what the consumers want and how they want it, again, consumer focused, tech powered, that is really what it's all about. Um, the consumer demand and behaviors continue to change. They want and have wanted things that are fast, simple, beautiful, easy to use. Space and home requirements have changed. I got a little block on that. Hey, Things Jan, Brian, efficient and integrated. Yes. Jan, do you have control over your uh, document so you can move it up and down? Yeah, I'm still right here. Okay. Efficient, integrated, digital transactions and closings. Thank you. I'll move it up now. Um, so that was the common major theme. So let me just get into a, t a, a block here I'm calling pivoting, adapting your business in the pandemic because of the pandemic. So that's kind of the theme. A lot of people that moderators were asking that. So I'm just going to give you the highlights I wrote down from different people. I don't even have who said all this because a lot of people were repeating the same things. Sure. But however, I went and looked at this. So the Lean Startup by, this was actually Chris, um, not Chris, uh, Jimmy Macklin from um, uh, Curator was talking on a panel. And he mentioned the Lean Startup by Eric Rees. So there's a leanstartup.com. Go check it out. It's kind of interesting. But this is the quote that he had that I thought was powerful. A crisis from this book or from this guy, a crisis has an un, un, unintended benefit where it forces you to make a decision about something that you should have already made a decision about. Isn't that powerful? Talk yeah, about get totally. the acceleration. The acceleration theme was like, you know what you need to do. You know what you've been needing to do. You didn't do it. Now you got to do it. Another way to simplify that statement. And that's an unintended benefit, if you want to look at it that way, of mm. this crisis. What do you think of that? I, I, it's very motivational. Everyone should uh, look in, up, you know, into themselves and try. Oh my to God, that was another one. It's introspective, which is yeah. down here in this manage your mindset, which we talked about at the top of the show. It's a lot more work to manage your mindset because you can get, you know, you can just, I mean, look, this is really showing people's inner strength. You know, are you going to just sit at home, not eat, be healthy, not take care of yourself, be in the funk and just be in your funk because that's what you want to do. And maybe there's days where you can be that. I think like you can't do it all the time. Be positive. That's right. Uh, or are you going to use the time to go? And I struggle with this, Matt, you know, I, I just think that you you know what you need to do. You just know, you know where you, you want to go because you just do. That's just part of you. Right. And the difference and, is, do you and, do it? And, uh, yeah. And there are days you do it and there's days you don't. And fair enough. That's exactly what I it mean. Is. It really is. I mean, it's as simple as that. I mean, it's, it's super, super simple. And you know what? Maybe that's OK. It's there's day if you're aware of it and there's day you can't you know, you need to have some downtime and you need to do whatever. And, you know, maybe it's where I'm coming from is sometimes I think, wow, I can't you know me. I, I can't just stop. There's always no. a million things to do. Well, no. no, you need to stop. I need to stop. You do. I need to take, in fact, I'm stopping. I'm stopping. Oh, I, I, I have been We're trying doing this to, podcast early because Jan is getting in a car and driving to San Diego to visit some friends. I have been trying to do that for eight years since I've known you, and you have not learned. But I think maybe you're starting to learn, uh, you know, a little bit about how what that is. It's important to have a little break. All right. Well, we're gonna do it, um, and uh, I'm going to be fine. So uh, managing your expenses. Uh, so obviously everybody has made a realization, especially people that own companies down to uh, business, individual business owners like real estate agents. What the heck, you know, managing your expenses, making adjustments, the importance of having savings for your business and your personal life. Hello. How many people really have cash reserves? That uh, right now. None. Yeah. So <laughs> a few, just like a few people in their personal lives have, right. you know, the, the, the adage is, you know, you need six months of emergency money. Well, I think what this has done is made everybody realize don't go out when everything gets back to semi new normal or whatever it's going to be. 
um, and spend all your money, which some people are doing because that's going to be their mindset regardless. It's I need to start make sure because this could happen again or we could shut down again or whatever. We got to build cash reserves. Hey, hey, on top of that, it's like there is even I've, I have uh, talked to people that have their um, pension plans are now gone. So yeah. it's there's been yeah. some rebound though, right? That, yeah. they're down and they're building up, but they, but it's volatile. So they so they had done everything they wanted to do all their entire life, but not now. <laughs> yeah. Right? So you you just have to be wary and not not wary and scared, but protective and and and, and um, uh, attentive. I guess attentive is the best word. You know, staying in that financial sense, a couple of things that some people said were things like uh, grow and focus on profitability. You have to really know your true return on investment, your ROI. There's so many realtors who are not good at this, meaning they just track their gross revenue, but not their expenditures. They look at the top line and they don't look at the bottom line. And it, the focus should be always, regardless of a pandemic, growing to be profitable, not just to say I have you know 10 million in sales. That's awesome, but if you haven't made a dime because right. you spend everything, that's not business, right? Uh, conduct a self and operational assessment. That's what we're talking about here. You may have to go back and take a look at that and make the changes to it. Uh, a lot of the brokers were talking about how Zoom, and I feel like what this happened for us too, cr it created more of a collaborative environment and strengthening of your culture, you know, um, that yeah, you, you have, you have to weird. make an effort with it though, but more people connecting because of things that uh, they're doing. And, and it, most of it was because they're doing virtual things online. And, you know, we definitely did that. We went through and did this whole 30 day challenge and, and you know we had we had a core group of people who did that but in any brokerage it's always just a core group of people who show up to do anything anyway because everybody is kind of independent or part-time or whatever right. a couple other things uh find better mentors um networking you know like who is it that you really want to hang around with um you know uh, the customer experience continuing with that people's main concerns all of us are health money and freedom right now that is that is talk about coming to the forefront in in um, COVID-19 and during shutdown and pandemic time. Hello, it's health. Am I going to have enough money? And my gosh, my freedom has really been restricted, right? Yeah. So uh, don't sell, listen and serve. That's not new, but that is so important to build the relationships. And people are talking about things like making connections, you know, like you might be doing things online, but maybe you send them a personal note or a gift, you know, checking in on them. We talked a lot about that. Leveraging time with technology, uh, but using it effectively. So consulting, now it becomes a measure for you to, a way, a method rather, for you to consult, present, communicate, um, create more video, double down on learning um, and technology. Well, clearly that's what most people have to do because they haven't been using it already. Um, this was something, you know, who said this and I, this is the, I was really impressed. I can't think of her name right now. First name's Leslie. She is the economist for California Association of Realtors. And she started and is part of a group called Woman Up, which I actually joined Woman Up exclamation, which is a lot of powerful brokers and agents, females that are, uh, that have a group and they do share, they do, you know, lives on Facebook and really some powerful stuff there. But anyway, she has some great stats to share, which is basically everything we've been talking about with the numbers or uh, the rebound. H housing is is going to be fine. You know, I'm not going to talk about numbers today, but, you know, you need to go check it out locally or go to Keeping Current Matters to get uh, great content from those guys. But honestly, we're good with housing. OK, there's issues with inventory, which is going to keep the prices inflated. There's, uh, you know, it's all good. You just have to make your adjustments. So we're not like going to go out of business because people are still buying houses and selling their houses. But her comment was, your competition is you yesterday and anyone working harder than you today. And I just love that, right? Anyone oh, working harder than you today is your competition because or making those adjustments. A little bit on space and issues. Um, so there was a great presenter, and I have the uh, link to their website, which is homestage, your hsraagent.com. So you can actually like do some training with them or be membership with them. I don't know. There's some content over there. You can go check it out. But she and others spoke to these couple comments about what the trends of what people are looking for in homes and what we all think is going to happen in this new normal because people are going to spend more time at home. Let's face it, right? In the next year or so, and then people are going to change, uh, are going to get to Gary Keller here in a minute. People are going to get to their, to, 
you know, behaviors have changed. Will they go back? Maybe not. So that's going to impact. And if you stay on top of this, you're going to be aware of what people are looking for in homes and be able to talk to them a little bit better. I also predict, predict that the new builders are going to start designing floor plans that speak to these things. A lot of them already have. So flexible workspace, one to two zones in a house where people can go work. There's going to be more people working remotely. Uh, maybe there's going to be that movement to that companies having some people at work, some people at home, more jobs working from home. So an extra bedroom, bonus space, a decompressed zone. If we're all living in a house together, you got to have some little private places to go, right? Um, like yeah, to totally. yoga or to meditate or to read a book. Bigger yards, resort style outdoor area. Again, if we're going to be in our homes more then people are going to want areas that they can entertain in their backyard or feel like they're doing something and getting outside without wouldn't being safe. And and still that grand central kitchen with the bigger open area too is I th I still think a, a, a something that's a, people want in, in their floor plan. So very interesting things around that that I think we're going to see. I also feel that it's going to continue to be about um, multi-generational slash people sharing space together meaning yep. hey you have money we like each other i have money you why don't we pull our money for a down payment and why don't we find a home where we can have our own space and we can share expenses i think we're going to see more of that besides family members living together yeah mm -hmm. there's been a lot of that as it's gone on i think over the last uh you know 10 years or so in irvine here in california there's a lot of uh, new home uh uh building that has done exactly that whereas they almost detached but still kind of attached um separate living space for you know a loved one or yeah, two yeah. Or, or two families even in a couple i've seen so exactly in different spaces yeah. and so forth yeah okay it, it, it makes sense it it's does make sense and, and we're going to see more of it so uh gary keller was really as always intriguing and interesting and he's drawing on his boards and i took a snapshot which i'll have here in a second and you'll see it if you watch the video so he talked about three things the fast tracking of disruption again acceleration right i've heard that many times what might have taken five to ten years is now less than two years in his opinion and i agree the new normal doesn't mean that it's worse and i 100 percent agree with that i think we're all making the adjustments you know in his book uh what was it called? Uh, one thing, one thing. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I think was about um, the whole thing of 66 days. It takes on average from his studies and so forth, 66 days to make uh, a change of behavior. Well, at the time he was promoting and, and was talking on Inman, we were right in 60 something days of, of uh, the COVID pandemic and, and great point because people's behaviors have changed. So he got into this whole thing about we, we were all physically based and used tech to enhance. We're moving to digitally based and physically enhancing the experience. And so I'm going to describe this uh, this picture he drew, OK, that that if you're watching, you'll see he drew two circles, a bubble, a circle with physical and then a, one next to it that says digital. And then he drew a line from from physical to digital. And he said, this is what he said. And up above it, the drawing, it says least question mark. OK, so this is what it means. Physical based businesses say daily, what's the least we have to do in the digital space to protect my physical business? And the example he uses Barnes and Noble. All right. So Barnes and Noble is a physical and, and Amazon. Right. So let me go do the other one. So now he's got a he's got a, an arrow from the digital to the physical saying digital based businesses say every day what's the least we have to do in the physical space to kick your digital butt and his example was barnes and noble versus amazon and i just love this story because i love going into bookstores but one of the things that was interesting is they did they just almost refused they had a better product initially nook versus kindle but they didn't want to go down the path of being digital and they tried to you know, and so they got forced out of that. So because they took the least resistance path of we're going to stay physical, not adapt to consumer behavior, Amazon killed it just just in the beginnings of Amazon when it really was just going to be a book thing. Now look at them, you know, the, the place that you can get books shipped to you. So they now they're so big, they have just as much physical, but they're digitally based business leveraging the space, their warehouses to be efficient. Great example. So how do we use that? And that's the story that I'll leave you with on that to say, wow. 
consumer's not changing their mind. So whoever is figuring out the platforms and all that to deliver what the consumer wants is going to win. Okay. Comment on that? <laughs> no, except, except I hate Amazon. Okay. Well, they are the big granddaddy of everything. Right yeah, now. because they are, they're a monopoly and they have actually absolutely monopolized the whole market. And that, that's a, that's for another show. But good for them. Good for them for marketing right. You are yeah. you're Jan, you're right on point. But somebody there other people can get into the space. That's the point, right? No, so, they can't. But, but they've expanded now to own everything to your to the yeah, point. Exactly. So, so no. anyway, whatever. Not we're, not talking, we're, not talking about, we're not talking about that. I'm just saying know, you, you are absolutely right. They they captured the market. And that's and what that's we're talking how they about. Started and then look what they've done since then. That's what's scary. Yeah. Change the behavior, how people use space and technology, of course, has changed. That six six days I mentioned, this is not changing. We're not going back to how it was, and there it is, and you got to adapt. <laughs> those, who, those who don't want to figure that out, you know, there's you're just going to be you're going to be the Barnes and Nobles, okay? Strategic alliances and mergers, acquisitions is the third thing he said. It's going to speed up due to necessity. So it was like a perfect storm. The pandemic creates an economic and health crisis. Now we've got the moral crisis that's happening in the country with all the the protests, with police brutality, and and just writing that system and Black Lives Matter. So it's like a perfect storm of things happening. However, the inventory shortage has been the last 10 years adds to this pent up demand, which helps prices, which is why housing, we're gonna be okay. And then real quick, the three winners, the tech enabled consumer who is demanding higher quality consumer experience, the tech enabled broker and agent are the winners in this, if are going to be the winners and are the winners. Um, the rest of this is just a bunch of, uh, if you go over to the show notes, I've got links to different things that were cool that were d discussed, like uh, homebot.ai is uh, kind of an interesting thing. The T360 area, you may be able to get some of those downloads. They might have taken it down. But a couple other things that I found interesting, like the Leslie, her name, I didn't even get her last name here, but the car economist, her whole slide deck, if you want to see what she was projecting, you could download that. Uh, and a couple other things and some books that were talked about. I mentioned the Lean Startup. Profit First, which is a book I've heard about, haven't read yet. And then um, Simon Sinek has written a new book called um, Infinite Mindset. And I'll close with this. Adopting an infinite mindset. Choosing and maintaining an infinite mindset is hard, very hard. It takes practice and a community of support. It's a journey. Best travel together. Let's support one another as we learn to be infinite-minded leaders. So I'm interested. I'm intrigued by that. Oh, I like Simon that Sinek. A lot. I love that. That's yep. awesome. So, love so, that. That, so that, he's always cutting edge on the themes of what's happening. So yeah, totally. there you have it, kids. That is the uh, the Dan O'Brien's key takeaways from M and Connect, which, which solidifies basically everything we were thinking and talking about. And thought leaders and industry leaders from all over had the similar things to say. So I guess we're on the right track, Mr. Everson. That's really, very, really, very really cool. As always, Jan O'Brien, thank you for sharing. Good stuff. Watch this space. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. <laughs> That's a wrap for episode 123 of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. You can find all of our show notes over at wmailpodcast.com. I'm laughing because I am melting out here in the sun. It's kind of cool, but hot. Yeah, get, get into the air conditioning, Matt Emerson. Okay. <laughs> Jenna Brain, I great stuff today, as always. Well, we seem to think so. Hopefully some of our <laughs> listeners do. Oh my god. And, and we do. to that point, you could give us a little feedback and tell us that you're listening or even subscribe to our podcast if you're not getting it or leave us a review. That helps, you know. We've been doing this for a little while now, 123 episodes. Oh. We're gonna continue because we enjoy it and it's a way for us to stay connected to our group. And we're gonna leave you on this. We're we are working diligently remotely amongst all the other hurdles of stuff that we have to do to launch, relaunch WBNL coaching. We're very excited. Uh, hopefully we'll have some news for you in the next week or so regarding a new group coaching program that we're calling Elevate that we're going to launch uh, in July and a new exciting look for our online platform and coaching opportunities. Uh, so if you're ready to take some of the things that we talk about on this show and that we work with and the folks that we already coach, then you know what? reach out. We're here to help you. We're all going to get through this together and I'm excited and selecting and working with people who will really get this. That's where we're headed, right, Matt Emerson? Yeah. Oh my God. It's it's there's good stuff on the horizon, and the horizon is very close. It's, really it's cool. very close. Matt's been working on our our catalog of, of offerings, and woo, 
It's awesome. Can't wait to share that. We're going to start putting that in our show notes, probably starting next week so you guys can get on our interest list. And honestly, we have, we have put our pricing to a place that's affordable for everyone. We're super excited about some things that we're going to do. So um, thanks for hanging in there, those of you that listen to us. And I think more. the next chapter, look out, 3.0, WBNL Coaching 3.0. That's that what we're calling is it. correct. And just and strong. Everyone, every, everyone, you know what? Stay safe. Find your focus, but be forever wandering without mass. Boom. Thank you.